Hello, I'm the VX Toy Cat, and welcome back to the video. So, I'm be playing the Sandbox Evolution. This is a brand new game which launched literally today. That's right, Wednesday, the 16th of November. This game is now available for purchase on Steam for $9.99 or £6.99. You can buy it at the link in the description or at least see the Steam page if you're curious. And uh, let me just quickly mention before anything else that this video is in fact sponsored. The guys from all the people that made this game are actually kind enough to sponsor this video so you could see the game before you purchase it so you can truly understand what's going on here. Because when you just hear, oh, it's a sandbox, it's kind of hard to truly appreciate exactly what's going on here, but it's one of the biggest sandboxes I've ever seen and I wanted to kind of show you all the elements of the game so you can see what it's like to create a world, see what it's like to see someone else's and see what it's like to play through the content that's built into the game. I thought it was all very interesting and hopefully all of you do too. If you do like the video, like it, let me know because it helps out the channel a lot and let's know you do like seeing games like this one. Again, this is a really cool sandbox that I think you should be all interested. So you might have actually seen a little bit of this game before. Uh, it was, it's actually the sequel to a game called The Sandbox for Android and iOS. Uh, the differences between this and that is this has literally 10 times bigger worlds, has a whole bunch more content and obviously it's on the PC platform which means you get more access to more things, which I think is really, really interesting personally. And uh, let's just start by showing you exactly what this is all about with the sandbox mode. So yeah, you saw I've gone into it now. The sandbox is basically where you have access to everything and you kind of just build a world from scratch however you want to build it. So obviously in the background, you can see we've got this world. We can paint over that later, but for now, let's just leave that. You know, we're in the Arctic. Let's accept that's our theme. And uh, yeah, you can just start by building your world from the most basic elements. So for instance, we're going to start right here with some dirt. Isn't that lovely? As you can see, now we've got like a real platform for things to be built on. And we can even over here build a hill because guess what? We want a hill now. So yeah, isn't that wonderful? We've got a hill, we've got some dirt, and it all kind of goes like that. But it's not just, you know, building around with mud. Uh, you can also then add some soil on if you want. You can be like, okay, you know, even though this is the Arctic, we're going to add some sand in there because we want a desert over here. But yeah, basically, you've got these core elements right here. You know, let's say the 23, I think that is. Uh, you've got the core, oh, no, that's like a, that's more, a 27, I think that is. But yeah, you've got the core elements here that you can kind of build out of. Do you want to have some gas? Guess what? You've got some gas there now. Uh, do you want to have some, you know, do you want to build a wall? Everyone wants to build a wall, right? Then you can do that too. You can build all these things, all these elements, and you kind of get the point where you're building the basic stuff here. But then the interesting stuff comes in because there's all these additional things you can build as you play more of the game. Um, again, this is all based on, uh, you know, in game stuff because it costs, uh, you know, the in game currency, but it's not microtransaction uh, at all. There's no microtransactions in the game. It's just all about do you want to be like, do you want to have a Russian? Guess what? You unlock your Russian and you can place them down because all Russians look like this, and, you know, you can have some British people look like this, and you kind of get the point right there, right? So, okay, now we've got some people, now we've got a world. I mean, it's a very poorly built world that I put together, you know, in the last minute or so. But you see, you, you've got a world, you've got some people. We've got to keep the people away from the gas because a lot of these things interact with each other. Like, you know, a tree and the gas isn't going to interact, at least not to my knowledge. I mean, I guess we'll find out, won't we? But, you know, although some things like that won't interact, there are some things that will happen, such as if we buy a saber tooth, um, a predatory animal, big attack. I imagine this probably hurts the human. Okay, yep, it, it definitely hurts the humans. But, yeah, you kind of get the point where you have lots of stuff that kind of interact with each other in that way. So, yeah, then we can have like an igloo again because it, it is the Arctic, right? And then suddenly there's a house for people to live in. And yeah, you kind of get the point where you're building lots of stuff and it interacts together. And that's what makes it a sandbox. It's actually called the sandbox because it's a giant, giant sandbox. However, when you just see stuff like this done, you might be like, this game's a little. Uh, you know, like, I, I'm not really sure there's uh, you know, certainly too much for me in there. And at first, that was my reaction, like, okay, so you build stuff. I, I, I know that lots of people love this sort of stuff, and some of you are already going, like, oh my god, this is amazing. But me personally, I was like, I'm not really entirely sold yet. So let me show you a few other things you can do. So let's build a volcano shape. I, I think that's what volcanoes look like on the inside. Let's fit it in, because, again, it's 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 got so many tools to allow creativity like this. And then let's, um, I think, let's use stone, for instance. Uh, this, this, this is one of the cool things I learned very early on. Okay, I filled the entire world of stone. My mistake. <laughs> uh, that's that's why you got to be careful with the fill tool. Any sort of program right there. So I, I think we can just undo that, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, let's see if we can... Yeah, we, oh, you actually can just undo that. So let's let's go back. Let's pretend that never happened. And uh, let's let's go ahead and actually f uh, fill the inside in using the paintbrush tool here. So let's uh, use it like that. Again, never, never just fill the whole world of stone. Never a good idea. But yeah, then you just fill the entire thing the ins inside like this. And we got ourselves a volcano, right? Well, now what we can do, actually, we, we probably want to have some over there just to make sure it probably goes. But yeah, what you can actually do is uh, once we filled this up, which probably could have done by using the fill tool if we'd done it correctly, but you know, let's do it by hand to make sure we don't have another instant like that. Then uh, suddenly we can be like, oh, what happens if we add some lava on the inside? And in case you are curious what happens, uh, then this will happen. So yeah, this is like a volcano chain reaction thing where it's suddenly, oh, now we're going to fill this entire thing up and <laughs> because whenever it burns stone, you don't just get the lobby put in you get a tiny bit more and uh, you're gonna eventually just see it overflow or, you know let's let's make it overflow a little bit like that and then suddenly oh now lava's covering the whole world and you get the kind of point there but it's not just like okay now we can have lava like that we can introduce uh you know temperatures to the world we can introduce all these things and this is just the very start this is just the elements and the stuff together because bear in mind once you go past your people your elements your houses your all this stuff which you can place like guess what we can have deer what do we want deer i'm not sure let's put some in anyway but oh 
I guess they're dying from the heat. Oh yeah, it's it's very hot, so everything's melting. But yeah, okay, let, let's let's go back to regular temperatures. Very cold to make the uh, the lava melt over. Oh, sorry, freeze over. Or like yeah, turn back into stone. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, it's it's not just the element of like okay, let's have stuff combine with each other. But you also get characters. You also get all these things that can interact in either game ways, in either music ways. You can build your whole own game within this. So for instance, uh, let's place down uh, the caveman because we want to have him. Then suddenly you can control him as your avatar, and you can make levels for your caveman. So some all these things you've just placed it's playable around with do you want to do you want to make a level out of that volcano make it so you uh, you know introduce it that's something you can do and that's really really interesting to me. so oh we can have arnold now if you want so after we delete him of course but yeah i i think that's really really crazy interesting that there's like seven main characters and you build your game with this stuff like again you can see there's a bunch of game specific stuff do you want to have um you know like tnt there guess what you can place your tnt down if you want to and i just think it's amazing the game is kind of structured as a sandbox with progression because if it gave you all this stuff at first you'd be like okay that's kind of interesting but because because you slowly unlock it by playing and experiencing stuff, I think that's kind of cool. But yeah, once we've done with this world, you know, I don't want to save this one because it's just me with a caveman and a weird volcano that's frozen over. But if you want to save your world, then you can save any world you want to by being like, yep, let's save this onto the cloud if we want to. And if you actually use the hashtag PC, um, like hashtag PC is your uh, you know thing. Uh, you actually have a chance of winning a Steam gift card. That's right. For the first like week or so, they're just giving away Steam gift cards to the best worlds, which is something I think is amazing that they're trying to like foster the creativity in their community. And uh, yeah, to, to show what I mean by like there's a lot of creativity, let's pick some random worlds because uh, here you know as well as being able to just save your world, you can check out other people. So for instance, do you want to see like capture the tank or like nightmare hotel? Then guess what we can do that. Bear in mind this came out today and there's already all of these worlds. So uh, again, oh. I, I did something wrong. But yeah, look at all these worlds. There's actually option two. Uh, because, again, people love the creativity. And some people are really good. Some people are kind of weird, like Super Mario Hamter. I mean, I have to check this out now, right? But <laughs> some people do weird stuff, like they build Mario <laughs> as a giant fat hamster. Some people will do that. Because, by the way, you can just use this as an art platform if you want to. Because, uh, yeah, guess what? If we go to art, you can just see what other people have, like, drawn. So, isometric containers. Isn't that awesome? People have drawn this. Because you, the, the background is its whole own piece of art, too. You can combine all these things together, and I think that's kind of cool. So, this is Gaster from Undertale. Um, these are some really impressive things. Like, you get pixel arty stuff like Pepe the Powerful, <laughs> but you also get stuff like, uh, you know, apparently Oda Simon. I think that's amazing. You get music too, you get laser beam uh, levels, which again, it's like a whole own game within the game. But you can also just sort by games if you want to play what other people have built. If you don't care about building stuff, if, uh, you know, you're not necessarily great at your creativity, there's still all this you can do. Like, you can be like, okay, I'm going to play Ice Climber. Oh, I actually uh, completed that stuck in space level. But we can be like, I'm going to be an Ice Climber today. And it's a very zoom in level, but... Yeah, just, to me at least, this shows the level of creativity available, so... Oh, it's it's literally like the Ice Climbers in that we can only see... Oh, this is so cool! Again, I... Uh, so if you've, if you've played the Ice Climbers, or... I've never actually played it, but I played the, the Smash, Super Smash Bros. Melee levels, which is basically the same thing, right? Uh, this is, you know, this is they turn that into its full-on game, and I, I think that's amazing, firstly, because, again, we're trying to go off as fast level can let us and seeing if we can get to the top. And I, I think this this should be a good example of just how big you can make a level, because this is just taking one axis, bear in mind, you know, the, the vertical one. I guess that'd be the Y axis, right? But this is just taking one axis of the game and going all this way up with all this to explore. Can we jump on the top of these? Is that safe? Oh, I guess we can, okay. So it's just the sides that are super spiky. There we go, okay. Ow, oh no, okay, there's a flag right there. I assume that's like a saving point. Oh, it is. Okay, so that's awesome. But yeah, I, I, I love that this, that someone just built an ice climber level, and that's something you can do with this game uh, using just those tools I mentioned earlier. We did it. We got 5,000 mana because this was a difficult level. We got a score. We can, you know, compare our score. I, I think that's just amazing that all these people built all these things, and this is what I really mean when I say there's creativity in this game. It's not just, ah, oh, yeah, I, I I built my, my, my myself a volcano that didn't probably work. Instead, you can do stuff like, oh, let's check like, again. There's lots of stuff, and I just think that's crazy cool, personally. The fact that it's not just you can build whatever you want, but you can build these things that you might not have even known that you know you could build, which, uh, it's always cool, and a game can encourage you like that. So let's actually back out there. So that's the crate, you know, build something yourself, which you can start with a sandbox, lasers, game, music, pixel art. You do all those things if you want to, but as well as just building whatever you want, you can also play through some of the game's content. Because again, although like, creativity is a really cool thing, and I know so many of you will have seen that and be like, yeah, I want to do that, especially because of the whole gift card thing, which again, I thought was cool. You can also play through the game's campaigns, which I recommend for learning stuff, because there's a tutorial in here. Uh, you can learn about disasters. So let's actually show you one of those disasters by being like, oh, let's check out this, this second level right here. So. I don't remember which one this was. Oh, this one was just, um, so this is to show you some of the power of the tornadoes, uh, sorry, some of the power of the disasters. If we want, we can be like, let's drop a tornado on those cows, and 
you can kind of get the destruction. Because guess what? You can destroy your own stuff too if you want to. I, if I wanted to do this to Volcano World, I could have done that. And I guess it's it's all happening anyway. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'll actually get the points complete in a second. But you kind of get the point. It plays um, whatever this song called. The everyone knows it, right? Uh, if you if you want to be like, oh, let's let's try and um, if you want to you want to see what lightning does to the world, then guess what? We can. Uh, we can we can light up the whole place, and apparently there is such thing as too much power. But yeah, uh, there's there's all these cool uh, you know disasters which you can kind of play through. Uh, but as well as well as just disasters, as well as tutorial, uh, you've also got access to stuff like the uh, all these things. So uh, but again, you actually get the rewards in the mana for doing this, or whatever the in-game uh, in thing is called. Uh, so if we want to play with machines, we can learn about those. Do you want to learn about pixel art? We can do that, and it's cool that you learn about it while playing through a campaign. Like this stuff isn't just so. This is caveman. I haven't played right. this yet. I guess it's. Plus space bar or right click to jump. Oh, okay, okay. So basically now, now instead of playing, you know, disasters again, that same thing. We're playing a platformer all of a sudden. So oh, we we hold it. Ah, okay, then that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, we you, you know we, we we you learn about the game by kind of playing through it, which I think is a a really cool thing for a game on this scale to do because most. Most honestly, this is a problem I find with most giant games. Is like they have so much, it's hard to really learn it. But because it, this kind of introduces you to it step by step. Also, I think I just jumped on the slime. That's kind of cool. Okay, so we got the K to attack, so we can break through some walls if we want to. And again, this is the, the tiny stuff that you build up bit by bit is really, really interesting if you ask me. So yeah, this is the Caveman series of levels. There's a whole bunch of them built into the game. There's then ninja levels. There's all the other ones you've seen. And it's just a cool way to learn about each aspect of the game through playing. And again, this is still just one entirely optional part of it. Um, and again, as you, as you go through this, it might even inspire your own mind. Like, I didn't realize you could build such cool platforming levels. That makes me really want to do that. And oh, there's even like in-game, like not cutscenes, but like little comic strips to show you through it, which again, pretty cool if you ask me. So here's another level that maybe makes you go, wouldn't that be cool to build that myself? Uh, let's let's actually go through this one. And oh, I guess we got a, it's a, it's a slightly less rigid platformer. So. Again, it's it's showing off that instead of just being like, oh, yep, you can have square boxes like in, I don't know, like a old SNES or Game Boy game, you can build a super jaggedy level, I guess you'd call it. And there's the same thing. So let's move to the next level. Because again, I'm, I'm I'm really intrigued by this whole thing. So, oh, the, the baby I'm following has gone downstream. See, there's like a story behind this too. I guess you can make a whole campaign of levels if you really want to, which so so crazy if you want to be. But yeah, I, I I'm I'm gonna try and. Uh, race through this level because I, although, although I do love this game um, and I, I, I love the amount of stuff in it I worry that I'm just saying like oh there's so much you can do over and over again and I, I want to kind of show you it rather than say it because again as you see more and more I think I think it becomes more and more clear that ah oh, yeah if you it, it's, it isn't just a weird thing that Toy Cat's saying there is just a ridiculous amount of fair content and again bear in mind that was just one of the many different chapters of the many different campaigns you can actually do so yeah what I'm saying here really really cool game Lots of stuff going on, and uh, you know, as well as being relatively cheap for all the you know content. Like I've I already seen on the Steam reviews, it's been out literally today. Some people have dumped like all day today it seems into it because it's got that much to do. If you wanna, uh, and I, I think that's kind of cool. If you ask me personally, oh, we got some quests we can do personally as well. But yeah, I, I think this game is really cool. That's why I've checked it out. That's why I've shown it off to you. Uh, one more mention: this is a sponsored video, but I do think it's worth checking out regardless. If you have a Steam account and you want to purchase this, check out the link in the description. Again, it's actually the sequel to a game called The Sandbox for Android Now so maybe you want to check that out too. Either way, I hope you did all enjoy this video. Like it if you liked it, share if you really liked it, and subscribe if you're new around here because I make videos like this one every single day on my channel and if you subscribe, you'll see them dead on your homepage. Uh, one more mention, the link's in the description and use the hashtag PC if you do buy this game because you will, you know, you got a chance to get some random Steam gift cards, which is cool. The fact that if you build something amazing like Nightmare Hotel or like any of these different things, uh, you know, like the Ice Climber level, I, I forgot what it's actually called, but I thought that was amazing, then uh, you can actually get rewarded with Steam gift cards, which, you know, it makes it almost an investment in some ways. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video, because I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.